the dead of winter man it gets dark at 4 4 15 4 p.m you got to stay awake for four or five more hours it's very depressing but i like that they're taking music behind the lyrics and it's absolutely contradictory to the depression of the lyrics which i, I love that because we can't handle any more dark depression related to this miserable climate that our parents decided to procreate in What's up, YouTube? This is Shotgun back at you with part 11 of 12, which will be tracks one through five of Greta Van Fleet's Anthem of the Peaceful Army album. I decided to break it up like that because when I first saw that there was 11 tracks, I didn't realize that two of them were Lover Lever and Lover Lever Taker Believer. I will not be separately reviewing Lover Lever because it is clearly inferior because it has 90 seconds less of amazingness. I will do the full album review in two parts that will make my part one of 12, two of 12, etc. truthful. And accurate i'm doing it one through five because these are the best five songs on the album and i did not want to end with you're the one um, i'm going to stop a little bit more than i did the last time i don't think i stopped at all when i as soon as i press play on from the fires i just didn't stop i talked over it i'm going to stop particularly in these first five songs because they're absolutely fucking amazing and i want to go into detail about what makes them absolutely fucking amazing let's get into it Gotta love that Mellotron. Ninety percent certain that's what it is. It was away the ancient fear. to the anthem of the brand new day of brand new stars. As I mentioned in the first review of this song, I love the slow build. I love that it starts slow and just kind of creeps into the room. As opposed to starting out with a hard hitting banger like their debut album. Lots of room, lots of air around it, you know? Vocal comes in right away, but then the song just breathes. Now the song just steps in and continues to breathe, long, slow inhale and exhale between the vocals. Now that's four chords that I like, even though it's not a riff. There's more than just four chords going on, even though it's just technically a four chord progression. And it's mostly just Josh there. Everybody else is just laying low, playing simple parts. And Josh is just simple but passionate delivery. And this is where they get a little bit more detailed. Lyrics are great too. I love that synchronized line where everybody just jumps in on it.
That's beautiful. Need more volume. Nice bridge. Josh's vocals just almost take a lead, like solo roll often. Sounds like they definitely multi-tracked the the keyboard, the Mellotron. The first it was just in the right channel, now it's like a wall of sound as the song just grows and progresses. Now this is a hand-waving kind of part at the end of the song live that I could get into, you know? Ready to fucking rock, guys. <laughs> yeah. As a fellow Midwesterner, I can really resonate with the lyrics in this. And I'm glad they didn't take a, a song like The Cold Wind about the dead of winter and make it one that wants you, makes you want to slit your wrists. It's upbeat, it's positive, it's driving, it never stops. says that and it pulls up even though it's down he's the it's pulling you up let me pause that there so the, the melody which i'm not going to try to sing right now intervallically speaking i believe he's going from the minor seventh the, the song's in a but the vocal goes you know leave me in my bed today I said I wasn't going to sing, and then I did, and then it sounded like shit. <laughs> that minor seventh, the G note, pulls up to the octave, and it brings you back up to the root, which resolves, which I like, is very contradictory or contrasting to the, the overwhelming depression of living in that type of climate. When it's dark, like they're, they're in Frankenmuth, that's north. I mean, they're probably 150, 200 miles north of, eh, maybe 100 miles north of Chicago, where I live. In the dead of winter, man, it gets dark at 4, 4.15, 4 p.m. You got to stay awake for four or five more hours. It's very depressing. But I like that they're taking music behind the lyrics, and it's absolutely contradictory to the depression of the lyrics, which I, I love that because we can't handle any more dark depression related to this miserable climate that our parents decided to procreate in. That upbeat coming in like that, that really just pushes everything forward. slide guitar it's kind of a call and response thing between the vocals and the guitar Today. 
This part kind of feels like Neil Young down by the river to me, except more upbeat. solo such a simple arrangement but very effective little bridge into a super tasty solo right back into another chorus Ends on the upbeat. That's fan fucking tastic. Now this song. Oh my god. <laughs> this one gets me going, man. A lot. Ominous music playing. This is gonna be serious. Plug into the rock. Yeah. So fucking stanky. <laughs> Such a whale. So that part, I always hear that like, that's like a, like a, a talent scout. Hey, I saw your picture over there and that's sweet talking her. So the lyrics there are like this sweet talking guy who's like, yeah, well, I'm going to show you the world. Like this is what you could be. He's sweet talking, but the riff is fucking filthy. It's like this dichotomy. Is that the right word? Another contrast where it's like we have conflicting emotions between the lyrics. Somebody's sweet talking and then the music is just fucking filthy. Now, right where I paused it, it's going to come back in. The music goes sweet. And then this is when the lyrics take the turn. Words you know so well. You're in and out of fashion. Even right there, in a Hollywood of hell, he says it dirty. In a Hollywood of hell. And he says hell cleanly. That's a nice contrast. Very interesting, very unique. And I think the way the lyrics and the music work together in a contrasting way, it just makes an even better song. Again, with the vocal and the guitar, with that call and response. Now you're not at all. And everything is based against that four on the hi hat. The t t t t. It's. He's laying back behind the, the, behind the beat, very Bonham-esque. Bonham would be very proud of that, but yet it also doesn't feel like Bonham. It feels not quite as heavy or weighty as he would hit. It's just perfect for what the song needs, you know, and everything else, that guitar riff, is all referenced against that hi-hat, and it just feels really fucking amazing. Very nice rhythm. Back to the sweet part. They all said they love you, didn't they, darling? And the, the tones in his voice there are very like theatrical almost like like he's performing in a play or a, a stage production just a different tone of voice like he's 
at times he's the narrator of the story and at times he's different characters in the story the the talent scout so to speak that's how i kind of see it and hear it and then he's like a narrator kind of objectively observing the events that are transpiring in this woman's life and her career all alone Very cool drum groove there. Everything else just breathes. Sweet bass line. You've got it all. Love that. But I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you could use a little work. Well, your age. What a jag off. The Jake comes in and saves the fucking day with a ripping guitar solo. I'm going to violate one of my core beliefs here, which is interrupting a guitar solo. But I have to say that they're breaking this mold that I've always hated. I've always hated, and maybe it's the lead guitar player in me, but I've always hated when a vocal or another instrument, aside from the rhythm beneath the solo, interrupts a solo. But when these guys do it, it's like another, maybe it's the tone in his voice. It sounds like a guitar. But when Josh is wailing over a guitar solo, it doesn't take away from it. It supports it. It builds it up into something even greater with this synergetic effect that it just makes makes my blood boil in like the best type of way. Absolutely fucking love it. I'm going to start that solo over. And most solos would have ended right there, but they kept going. Why? Because they fucking can. And they kept going for another eight bars. One last lick there in the solo. That's like a continuation of the solo. And now he goes into the outro like that. <laughs> Again, with that minor seventh pulling up to the root, it creates this tension, but then it resolves and it's uplifting. It brings it up. My only complaint about this song, I wish they would have ended it on an upbeat. They ended on a downbeat. That's the only thing that I would have done differently. Let's get back to that. I want to show you what I'm talking about. That's where I would have ended it. Right there. That's the, my only critique of that song. That song fucking rips, man. I'm going to go ape shit if they don't play it live. It's another great one, too. Again with the hi-hat. That's the whole feel of everything right there is that... The, excuse me. It's such a unique way of forming his vowels, man. And the rhythm to be with the fall. Love it. The one that stands and watch I love the atmosphere with that sitar type effect. The vocal just fading in and then what might be the heaviest thing that I've heard from them so far, right here. The
very nice use of re repetition. Same pattern four times, yet it doesn't sound boring. Super tasty sitar solo. Kind of reminiscent of, uh, I believe it's Chicago. There's a long solo they have that's, I believe it has a sitar effect, but. I wish they would have done that. Bam, bam, right, like right here. A <clears throat> couple more stabs like that, I think, could have taken this part from awesome to a little more amazing, but I still love it. Sometimes Josh's voice has almost like a yodeling type effect, which can, a yodel can be really fucking annoying, but his voice is never. This, the way he can incorporate these different styles and techniques, it's just, it's mind blowing. started with that ballsy ass bass tone more stanky stank ass riffing Simple pentatonic lick. Right into a solo. That's what the world needs. More guitar solos, man.
I just love that they do this extended just jam vamp. It's a little grand funk kind of riff. Closer to home, maybe. Another band from uh, Flint, Flint, Michigan. They're from. I hope they still do a lot of uh, long jams when I see them. Somebody said that they might, that they don't do that so much anymore because they've got, you know, four albums worth of material now. I think they should just play for three hours instead of two, but... Nice slide playing. He's past the fretboard there, it sounds like. Which means he's playing over over the pickups, like the fretboard ends here and he's over the pickups, which is beyond what you can physically finger when you're playing, fretting the notes. fucking gods of rock and roll these guys are absolutely amazing i'm so excited to see them okay so that was the first five songs which i think are clearly the best five songs on the album that's why i wanted to stop at five plus it's it's 11 and there's no true halfway point so that's the perfect spot to stop it a lot of great material everything about it is is just perfect absolutely loved it this is shotgun please like comment subscribe hit the notifications bell share with your family friends everybody spread the word of the peaceful army and shotgun signing off